Isso. Yeah. No, I mean, who knows? All right. Praise God. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. We, we put that one away. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's all stand. Amen. Perfect song for a smaller crowd. I went to the enemy's camp. This is a shouting Texas song. Amen. But let's sing it with all our hearts. I went to the enemy ca enemy's camp and I took back what he stole from me. Those on the live stream, we welcome you as well. In Jesus' name, let's sing it together. Here we go. Well, I went to the enemy's camp and I.
under our feet he will shortly be crushed stand and all will stand in victory making war in the heavenlies tearing down principalities standing firm in Jesus victory making war in the heavenlies casting down Exalted sound against the knowledge of God. And our hearts are set apart. And our hearts are set apart for the course of the Lord. We will not be bought or sold. By His Spirit in us, we will overcome. Pulling down every strong. Tearing down principalities, standing firm in Jesus' victory, making war in the heavenlies, casting down every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. That exalts itself. That exalts itself against the knowledge of God. One more time. That exalts itself against the knowledge. Let's thank him, Jesus. Amen. Give us the victory. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. My fingers are all tired. Amen. We're going to try that new song, uh, Lord, I Need You More. And this is kind of going with the message tonight, amen. We need Jesus more than ever before. I always said, normal isn't coming back, but Jesus is. Amen. So let's sing that with all our hearts. I need you more, more than yesterday. Here we go. you more, more than yesterday, I need you more, more than words can say. Give him praise. We thank you, Lord. 
Father, we need you, Jesus. God, in these last days, Father, more than ever before, we thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let us bow our heads. God bless you, everybody. Amen. We made it through that last song. Amen. How many know we need Jesus more than ever before in these last days? Amen. So let him fill your heart. Amen. And you know what? I hear often before we go into prayer, it says, you know what? I haven't heard from God in a while. I got a solution and an answer for you. I say this with grace. Amen. You need to empty yourself. Amen. The problem why is sometimes we don't hear from God is we're so full of ourselves. And I need that spiritually. I know there's a, in the world they say that you're full of yourself, but that you can also be full of yourself in this world, amen, where there's no room for Jesus Christ. So I pray that he fill you right now as we're gathered in faith, amen. Let us put everything aside, even our tiredness. I'm very tired today as well, but God's going to help us, amen. We are asking for a visitation of the Holy Ghost. Every service, an opportunity to hear from God, amen, to be challenged, but to be encouraged, amen, that we do serve a Savior, amen, a God who is forgiving people every day. And I just think about it sometimes as I sit there. I said, you know what, if I mess up, you know, am I going to miss heaven? You know what? I learned from my mistakes, amen, and we should too, knowing that God's grace is for us, and he wants to help us every day to achieve the righteousness that he's called for our lives, amen. So let's continue to pray. Uh, I got a new list. My wife helped me out with it. Uh, Patrick Estrada, we're going to pray for God's comfort in his last days, amen, to overshadow him. We're also praying for Tony Hernandez. This is her uncle uh, with cancer. Uh, he has been facing nonstop infections, and due to uh, tubing, he, he has needed three surgeries already to replace the leaky tubes. I'm not sure how that works, but we're going to pray for Tony Hernandez for a supernatural uh, miracle uh, for God to just help his life. Amen. Let's continue to pray for Janie and Benny and for God's favor in finding uh, the right house. We're going to lift up Jerry House. I'm sorry. We need to lift that up more. I didn't have it on my list, amen, but we're praying for her cancer and treatment. Amen, for God's favor to f bring full restoration and salvation. Amen. Let's pray for backsliders, amen, those that have left the faith. Uh, we're talking about all over the city, whether they came to this church or not. Amen. God loves the backslider. Uh, that These are people that just uh, have a, will go through a moment and a season, and they choose to reject God. But the Bible says he's married to the backslider, so we're praying for them. We're going to pray for my brother Andrew for salvation, deliverance. I'm praying for my brother Corey. He did get a new job, something that he's more interested in in the medical field. So I'm praying for God's security in that and stability uh, so that God can help him with that. I'm going to pray for my mother, and we're praying for all the leaders in El Paso and in uh, Prescott, Arizona. Amen. So let's pray tonight as we come in faith, and we're going to petition God's throne. Pray from your heart uh, this night, amen, that God would help you. We're also going to lift up, I didn't put him on here, we're praying for Mario Ayala, I'm praying for uh, God and the, the Holy Spirit, amen, to just touch his life, amen, to fill every crevice of his life, uh, to be empowered and to be led by the Holy Spirit, amen. So let's pray tonight, we're going to ask for God's favor, amen. Father, we thank you today in the name of Jesus Christ, God, we lift our voice in faith and unity here tonight, God, we believe in the power of Jesus Christ, and we thank you, God, for allowing us to gather in faith and unity in the body of Christ, Father God, fill every heart with the love of Jesus Christ, God. Forgive us our sins, our transgressions, our iniquities, Father God, for the blood of Jesus cleanses all sin, and you are faithful and just to forgive us of everything according to the word of God, Father. We pray for every person on this prayer list, God, those that were wrote, uh, written here today and those that were not, Father. We pray for everyone on the live stream, God, everyone here today, everyone who's not here, Father God, send our love. And, our gra and the grace of Jesus Christ to them, Father. We thank you so much. In Jesus' mighty name, we all said, amen. Take a small amount of time. We'll bless one another. Have a seat shortly, amen. Praise God. Amen. Good to be in the house of God tonight. Everyone love the song? It's okay? All right, we made it through. It has so many change chords, uh, but we need Jesus more than ever before, so I need to practice that more often. My wife's like, well, we should start coming Mondays and practicing. 
uh, the song service song. So I'm like, what I need you to do is get on the guitar because these fingers uh, are giving up on me. So um, I do want to continue to add as much as I can, uh, but just keep paying for the ministry. Amen. Where'd everybody go? <laughs> Praise God. Amen. We will take uh, an offering before we get to the message. Uh, John chapter 11 is the main text. And again, um, so the finishing, the last of the project, I know all we see is this. We just need that permit, and then we'll start moving with that. I just want to, want to remind you for that. Amen. Thank you for your patience, and uh, God's going to help us with that. We're going to get working, Aroni and the other men. And I do want to build, I know it's going to sound weird, uh, just an altar space. So if you want to kneel, we're going to carpet it a little further this time, and then have uh, an altar up here if you'd like to kneel. You know, some people like to put their head on the altar space. You can do that. And it's not to elevate me or make me more special. I know someone told me that once. I'm like, why do pastors go? No, it's not, okay? It is not that. You should see what they did in the Old Testament. Amen. So we'll wait for that. Uh, as we're giving tonight, amen, we're just going to bless the king kingdom of God. If you did give your tithes and offerings, I thank you for that. Amen. And we're going to continue to believe God. I do the finances tomorrow, and then we're going to send that world evangelism check to our pastor, amen. Thank you for contributing. And if you didn't, that's okay. Amen. There's, uh, we're going to keep doing this. Set aside an extra sum of money, even if it's $5, a dollar on the side. Whatever it is, God knows our heart. I set it aside, and we send it out to the missionary field. And uh, we believe God for that as well, amen. To be a blessing to those who are willing to sacrifice uh, their lives, and it helps relieve the burden from the El Paso church. If you saw my pastor's budget list and what they're paying for churches out there, it would blow your mind. It seems impossible. But what makes it possible is people that give. And the Bible says that people were willing to sell their possessions in Acts chapter 2, that they all gave according to what they could and gave from the heart, selling possessions and giving at the apostles' feet. And they did this because they believed in what Jesus was doing upon the earth. Amen. Do you have that level of faith? I challenge you uh, with that tonight. Amen. So let us pray. Father, we thank you uh, by the grace of Jesus Christ. And as always, we thank you, God, for all the good things that we have, for the food on our table, God, for the breath in our lungs and the heart and the ticker that's still beating today, God. We're so grateful for the presence of people, God, and I thank you, God, for my family so much, God, all that you're doing in our lives, even in hardship, Father, God. We're filled with joy and strength to continue the good fight, even in, in just being tired, God. I thank you for the strength. Had I been in the old life, God, I would be upset and mad at everybody, but I thank you, Father, God, for allowing me, God, to experience this, Father, knowing that the glory comes in Jesus' name. So I ask that you would bless the tithe, the offering, God, and I ask that you bless everything that came in for world evangelism. We do this not to earn rewards, but we do this because it's the right thing to do, God, to bless those that are out in the field. Uh, bless Pastor Bobby and his wife, God, his children, their efforts, and every other country that we have out today uh, that represents this church, God, and the kingdom of God. So bless the finances, tithe, offering, gift, and giver in Jesus' name. Amen. Basket will go around. Uh, you can give. I know we have uh, the cash app if you have tried that. You know, save you a couple checks. Does it cost to get a checkbook? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ours is to here, so I'm running low from, I mean, we used to do it from West Dallas. And so now it's come to the bottom, like, do I have to pay for these or do you just ask? So that. Yeah, that's why I wanted to ask Alan. God bless you, brother. Um, if he would take cash app. Anyway, <laughs> hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Uh, John chapter 11 in the word of God. Let me turn off the elevator music. And uh, we're going to turn to John chapter 11. I want to preach on grave clothes uh, out of John chapter 11, verse 38 through 34. Let me get this real quick here. Grave clothes. Think about what I'm saying here today. I know, right? We're thinking the Michael Jackson uh, zombie song, but that's exactly it because before we were in Christ, uh, the Bible says that we were dead in our transgressions. We were literally the walking dead around the earth. We were filled with envy. We were filled with uh, debauchery. We were filled with drunkenness, with anger, with rage, malice, deceit. We were cheating and cheating others, cheating ourselves, Cheating in our taxes, amen, cheating on our wives and husbands and all that, amen. We were dead while we were standing, while we had a heartbeat. We were literally the walking dead. 
But thanks be to God, amen, who has delivered us from darkness unto light. I want to share an interesting article here. This was the only picture I found of these in individuals here. It doesn't say too much about them as far as their personal life. But on April of 2021, Kyle Betts and David Brady were found dead. And here's the issue, because a lot of people die in their apartment. Again, they called it accident overdose, but they were doing uh, drugs in their apartment in college. And what ended up happening is that their bodies were sent to their, to their parents, but it was the wrong body. And it hap what happened, the issue happened to begin with the medical examiner who did not do their job, and they were wearing the almost uh, the same exact thing. And it's crazy because uh, one of them was 5'4", and the other one was 6'2". So how do you confuse that? See, it was an, a mistake by identity, the clothes that they were wearing, and it, 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 it was a big error that had happened. Their case uh, number here, when, you, when I was reading the article, it was off by just one digit here. And because the medical examiner had put the clothing wrong, at the, at the crime scene, when they took them to the, the morgue, everything was swapped around. It was completely the wrong person. It gets even worse. So his, one of the mothers that lived in Waco, Texas, because this happened in Florida, a mother in Waco, Texas, was waiting for the body of David Brady. And when it arrived, she said, this is not my son. And they said, we checked the files, the record case number matched, the identity matched. He says, my son has uh, kind of like sister here, strawberry blonde hair. And this person has darkish, you know, streaks on it, uh, hair, but this is not my son. And she says, I'm sorry, the medical examiner confirmed it, and it was based off of the identity. And what ended up happening is that she called the, the, the funeral home in Florida, and when she called, she said, is my son there? She says, uh, well, the body has just been cremated. One mother wanted her son cremated. The other one asked for involvement. So she never got to see her son one last time before he was put into the ground. The way they discovered it is tracking the record going way back, and it was the hat that, that made the match. He was a huge uh, Jacksonville Jaguar fan, and when they said that, that he was wearing that, he says, my son is not a Jaguars fan. And, you know, he was a Texan fan. God bless that team. <laughs> Amen. But he, since the, it was the cap that made all of the difference that said we got the wrong body. Let me ask you a question here today. Great clothes. Are you wearing them? The Bible speaks of that we have to have the right identity to be part of the kingdom of God. And a lot of the time, amen, we have, an, and it's happened to me before, I'm being honest here today, we have an itch to go back to the grave, amen, to dig up the old self, right? We take out pounds of dirt, uh, and we find the old attire that we used to wear. And the wrong att attire, amen, could cause you your fate. And in this case, the wrong person was cremated and given to the wrong family because of what was worn. Let us read our text in the Bible here in Luke, in Luke, I'm sorry, John chapter 11, 38 through 44, amen. Let us wear the right grave clothes, I mean the right clothes in Jesus' name, and do not be found with your grave clothes on. I know, I need a little sleep. And Jesus said, uh, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. This is Lazarus at the tomb. And it was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. And 39 says, take away the stone, he said. But the Lord said to Martha, the sister of the dead man, but this time there is a bad order, for he has been dead for four days. And then Jesus said, did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? And so they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I say this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. Now it gets interesting in 43. And when he said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. And the dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with stripes of linen 
and a cloth around his face. And Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. Amen. Let us bow our heads in the presence of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you, amen, for it is us, God, who were dead for years before salvation. Our body reeked of foulness, God, and all uh, putrid smells, God, that were just impossible to bear. And we did not notice these things, Father, for we were truly dead in our transgressions. We were the living dead that walked and roamed the earth, God, with sensual desires, God, and gratifying the desires of the flesh. Uh, but God, you spoke and you have called us today to come forth and to take off the grave clothes and walk in holiness and righteousness. And today, God, we live in honor of you. And we thank you, God, that even in our, in our mistakes that we can find forgiveness in Jesus' name, God, but you have called us. For the scriptures uh, commend all people to no longer live as Gentiles in the futility of their thinking and cheating and lying and despair and hurting others, God. You have called us to live in righteousness and peace with all mankind, especially the household of God. Father, bless us today, and I pray, Father God, that on the day that you would return, we would be wearing the right attire so that we would not end up in the grave. And we thank you. In Jesus' name, we all said, amen. amen. Both feet in the grave. How many remember those days? I mean, we were dancing, like I said, uh, in that Michael Jackson zombie movie. We had both feet in the grave. We were dead in our transgressions. Uh, we were the Lazarus. Uh, we were inventors of evil. I could think of some evil things that I uh, made up. Uh, when you look at the world today, some of the things that they're practicing was not even in our mind because how foul that they can be. The Bible says in Romans 1.28, uh, it says that they are inventors of sin and do not know when to stop sinning. How many remember those days? We thought it was the glory days. Lying and deceiving. But when we look at uh, how the image that the Bible paints of hell, again, the jaws are widening on a daily basis, the Bible says. Continuing uh, with many people entering into the jaws of hell. And for this reason, you know, people say they want to be so they want to see zombies. Can I tell you the day of the resurrection when people are coming out of the graves, uh, they're going to see people coming out uh, in, in, in the likeness of Jesus Christ. Ephesians 2 and uh, 1 and verse 3, look at what it says here. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sin, in which you used to live. Can you say amen? You used to live. When you followed the ways of the world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. And all of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of the flesh and following its desires and thought. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. Can you say amen? I'll, I'm going to say it clear. I was a whoremonger. Amen. I was an alcohol addict. I was a manipulator filled with greed. I, I mean, right after work, I, I'll tell you one time, I, I got off of Walgreens. I was already drinking pint after pint. I remember I went to the liquor store. I bought me a cheap bottle of this turkey vodka. I mean, it was 10 bucks the big gallon one. I went home. I showered up to take the smell out of my body. But I'll tell you what, I filled up a cup with orange juice. I chugged the whole thing and I took a shower. I remember coming up. I felt good. I said, I'm walking to this girl's house, you know, because I honestly, I was a loser. I was, I mean, I didn't have my, my mom wouldn't let me sneak out. So I snuck out of the house. I couldn't take the car. And as I'm walking there, I'm stumbling. I pass by the liquor store that I bought my liquor. I was almost blacked out at this moment within 30 minutes. I'm not kidding. I just chugged it down. And these individuals saw me stumbling. They said, dude, where are you going? You are not. Were you at the bar all night? And I said, I'm going to my girlfriend's house. He said, we'll give you a ride. Can, can you imagine that for just one moment? I remember blacking out but bits and pieces of in this stranger. I mean, they could have taken me anywhere. And I directed them. I could have been, you know, a serial killer. And they took me there. I stumbled at the house. I climbed over the wall, went into her house, and the rest is history. I remember just blacking out. In the matter of 30 minutes, I said, I'm chugging the whole vodka thing. I put the orange juice. I said, we're having a party today. And I was just going to a girlfriend's house. But I'm here today, amen, to tell you that I am no longer in the grave. Can you say amen? I am no longer the man that I used to be. God has delivered me. And I look back and I said, this, 
I, I tell my children, is, you really want to see me like this? You want to see the bad guy? Amen. I can go back to the world. Beloved, God is doing so much upon the earth. He has changed people's lives every day. And this is not a show here today. Amen. This is not a pretend uh, make up stories. Uh, I was bound by the things of this world. Think about that. This is the picture that illustrates what the dead appear like to Christ. Look at verse 28, 38, I'm sorry. Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. He's, he's given us a picture of where we were, amen? We were the man in the tomb. He says, take away the stone. He says, let's see what's in the inside of a man. But the Lord said, Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there is a bad order, for he has been there for four days. Can you, anyone here understand what four, a decomposed body in only four days, what it looks like? Some of us think it takes months. Can I tell you, the process is immediately, even an hour to four hours after dead, that, what do they call it when your hands start to lock up? Amen. The joints are already locking in place. So the fluids are beginning to uh, decompose. The organs are breaking down. I mean, 24 to 72 hours after dead, the internal organs, they say, are already starting to decompose. That's just one day. Three to five days after day, the body starts to bloat. And the blood containing foam leaks from the mouth and the nose. Sorry for the bad image. But there's a picture of me before I got saved. Okay. <laughs> I did have hair like Justin Bieber, <laughs> amen, you know, and again, this is an imagery where, where Jesus is saying, we got to see what is behind the tomb here. Somebody is in a tomb dead right now, and Martha is telling me it's been four days, I mean, just going eight to ten days after death, the body turns from green to red as the blood decomposes and the organs in the abdomen accumulate gas. This is what I saw in an article, I'm like, Okay, this is nasty. Now, don't go to the image section because I clicked one and I'm like, whoa, they find people in, in beds for over two weeks and nobody knew about them. Jesus has given us a picture here, beloved, of what man looks like without salvation. By this time, there is bad order, he says, she says, for he has been there for four days. Even after a month of death, they said teeth and nails fall out and the body starts to liquefy. And this is an image of what dead people look like. And, but I've always said it before, you don't have to be six feet in the ground today or dead on your bed to understand what it feels like to be dead inside. Jesus is calling us to come forth. He says, now, when he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice. He says, Lazarus, come forth. And he saved a really dead individual just like me. I got to put myself up there. You know, when I got saved, I don't know what it was that day. I mean, the coffee must have been strong when he, when he saved me. Because I'll tell you what, I woke up, right? I mean, that coffee had to have been the most, I mean, it just... I mean, the day of salvation came with great power. I told you before, right? I mean, anyone can move a crowd and say the right things, beloved. When salvation happens, it is a supernatural work of God where God takes a broken, dead individual and speaks into their life uh, and breathes a spirit back into them to be awakened from the dead to experience and to hear his voice once again. When I got saved, I'm not making this up, beloved. Something supernatural happened in my life. I felt led and I, I don't know if I shared this before, but when I was standing there, I was resisting the Holy Ghost, looking like this, man. I'm like, no, the living dead wanted to stay dead. And my wife is looking there, and I'm looking back at her. I said, I'm not answering this preacher. You know, I know what it feels like to be back there. And says, do you want salvation today? And I'm fighting it. I'm like, I didn't want to be here. I, I wanted to be home drinking and having a line of cocaine. And I stood there, and all of a sudden, I felt the Holy Ghost pushing me from behind, saying, 
come forth. Amen? Come forth from the grave. Be restored. Experience the power of salvation. And for this reason, I said, people are tired of talking Christians. Amen? They want to see the demonstration of the power of God, of a resurrected life, come to life once and for all. I remember peeking at my wife like this. I'm like, does she raise her hand? That's why when I look at you people sometimes, especially Mario, he'll be looking at the friends to see if they're, I know what that feels like. You know, it's like there's a heavy conviction and you want salvation, but you don't. uh, And you're wondering and all that flooded through my mind is saying, I'm going to fail God tomorrow if I lift my hand. I'm going to fail God. And that was a lie from Satan, beloved. He knew that the power of God was going to be demonstrated over my life. And all I could think of is that bag of cocaine that I had, the pack of cigarettes, the 30 pack of Bud Light that I had waiting at my house. I said, I'm going to pray today, but I bet you once I get back to that room, I'm going to go back to the same habits and look like this individual. But the power of God showed up that day and I had a supernatural strength. He said, come forth, my son. Come forth and remove the grave clothes for you are no longer the man that is inside the tomb. It was that day that the chains were broken. (laughs) He, He didn't preach anything fancy, right? But the spirit was so thick there that every word was just penetrating my heart. I'm like, I've heard things like this before. I've heard that you can go to hell. I've heard that Jesus died for forgiveness. What's so different today? Jesus said, I'm calling you to come forth. My life forever changed. And I thank God, amen. Even after that Sunday night, I said, kissed all my kids on the forehead again. I said, thank you, God, for what you're doing in my life, amen, because I am the man behind the tomb. Delivered. It was like the black storm of my life that always encompassed me. I was driving to Rockford one time, and it just got pitch black one time. I was at O'Hare Nice sunny day, and then just this thick cloud that came over. It was blacker than black. I'm like, is Lord, is he coming? I've never seen anything so black. And the storm fell. That's what my life represented. And as I got closer to Rockford, there was just this little burst of light that came out, and all of a sudden everything moved. This is what I experienced on the day that I got saved. And salvation is accomplished, Amen. There's some things that linger. Let me tell you about the things that linger. A lot of people get discouraged when they said, I prayed the prayer, I'm saved here today, but why am I still going through some things? I'll explain to you. But let me tell you real quick, amen. Are you ready for this? It says, then Jesus said, did I not tell you, if you believe, you will see the glory of God. He says, just hang on there. I have the power to call this man forth. And what gives me so much hope, I've said this before, I'm going to say it again. Amen. The vision that I get when, think about it, Lazarus' soul was in Sheol. That's that's Abraham's bosom. That was, no one was going to heaven. It was a place of paradise that the Bible spoke of before resurrection. So wherever he was in eternity, the authority of God, of Jesus' voice, saying, Lazarus, come forth, wherever he was in eternity, he heard the voice of the Son of God, and he was immediately quickened. He, whatever he was doing, he says, stop right there, go back into your body, and that's the authority of our Lord. I mean, that, to me, that imagery is like, man, that voice of Jesus is just powerful. Lazarus, come forth, and just quickened right back into his body. He says, didn't I tell you you would see the glory of God? But you see, when salvation is accomplished, our grave clothes still Remain. Let me tell you that. This is why I'm saying. You see, Jesus resurrects us from the dead. He puts a new spirit in us. Amen? The day that he saved us to recognize his voice, like, wow, that's what he sounds like. But see, that's the resurrection of Lazarus when he arose. But can I tell you what? As he was walking, he was still holding something. Look what it says. It says, now when he said these things, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come forward. The dead man came out. That is the resurrection of you. That is a day of salvation for you, that you rose from the tomb, but you still have, you're still wearing something. His hands and feet were what? Wrapped with stripes of linen and clothes around his face. You know what this tells me? That even though we're saved, sometimes we're still wearing zombie clothes. Right? 
I mean, he saved us from the grave. We're no longer lifeless. Uh, we are now an animated body, but we're covered in grave clothes. And this is what happens in salvation sometimes. Jesus saves us. He says, come forth, uh, and we're still wearing the same clothes, and we still have some really bad habits, right? Right? We, we wonder, why is this still happening here? Can I just say it tonight, amen, you still got stripes of linen around you that we need to pull right out in Jesus' name. You see, when I got saved and delivered, I'll tell you what, Jesus delivered me of the major bondages of my life. Talking about some sick stuff that were flo was flowing through this brain of mine here. He says, I'm going to remove all the junk, all the chains that you have here today, but I'm going to allow some of your characteristics to survive because it's too easy to just, you know, just snap someone so perfect. In order for me to teach you, I have to see how selfish you are. I want you to see right? How narcissistic you can be. Well, I mean, I, had, I still had jealousy. I had rage. There was this one time, I'm just going to be honest today. Today is grave clothes day. And, I'm, and I, I remember one time after service, my uh, um, uh, mother-in-law had come and she, she's, uh, they were going out to eat somewhere and I didn't want to go there. I wanted to do something else and I was just fresh married and I was just, it was just my way. This is how I wanted to do it. This is how I was going to go. And she said, no, we're going to meet over here anyway. She took off with her mother. I get into the Toyota Camry that we had. I was saved probably about a month or two. I get into the car. I'm saying bye to the pastor. Bye, everyone. Bye. To the and I got into the car. As soon as I got in the car, I still had wraps of linen around me. I got in the car. I was so mad because she didn't do what I said. I said, we're going to go straight home. I don't want to go eat with your mother. This is how it's going to be. She goes with mom. I drive out the first corner I see. I mean, I push that pedal all the way down. I mean, the car just... I lost so much control that I almost plowed into a rock wall until I gained control and put it on there. And fierce I was driving down the highway because I didn't get what I want. And I said... I, I, it was so convicting when God finally dealt with me the next morning. He says, you know what? You got some grave clothes that we got to deal with. Can you say amen? But I'll tell you what, uh, this is the part of the Christian life. This is what we call sanctification. Amen. God has saved the sinner, but sometimes we're not aware that there's still some kind of linen wrapped around us. It was a very jealous individual. Didn't trust I thank God right now I could go anywhere and I'm at peace at my mind. I know I, this woman loves me. I love her. She trusts me. I trust her. We know not to cross boundaries. We know not to entertain thoughts. We know not to uh, be in a place of suspicion. We trust each other so much. Uh, but I remember this one time again. I was at work. My mind's going crazy. Again, saved one to two to three months. Uh, and I still had some grave clothes on me. And at work, I'm thinking, there's someone in my house. They're doing the you-know-what. Uh, and my daughter's in there. And I'm telling you, this is the way my mind would think because of things that I knew. I was a rejected child. I saw different men in my house. Uh, so I knew that, that this is how life worked. Uh, and this is how it was. So I'm thinking these evil thoughts while I'm saved. And I said, boss, I need to come out early. I always came out at 3.30. That day I said, I want to be out by 2.45. I'm going to go home and check some things and make sure that nothing's happening in my home. So I would go and drive home and I would wait there. I mean, I was like the FBI, the ATF maybe. And I came in there and I would, you know, no knock warrant. I would just boom, bust it open. And I would go in there. I said, I caught you. And there she was rocking my little baby, little Chloe. And I said, I didn't know I had straps of linen behind me. The grave clothes were still on me. And God allows these certain things to say, I'm not done with you, buddy. It'd be too easy to just take everything away from you. I actually want you to learn some things. Can you say amen? I want you to understand, because how would you know what selfishness is if I don't catch you in the act of being selfish? How do you know what an idolater is if I just take it away without you knowing what an idolater is? How can I tell you what a, a lust of the eyes is uh, if, you, if I don't catch you in the act of lust of the eyes? Uh, I want you to learn, uh, and I'm going to provide grace for those things to happen in your life uh, so that when I catch you, I can correct you and say, ah, ah, there's some grave clothes back there. And some of us here today may be walking in them. You don't even know it. They may be wrapped around your foot or ankle today, and we got to pull it off. It might spin you a little bit, amen, but enough with the grave clothes, amen. God wants to put you robes of righteousness.
depending on your faith and sincerity. I mean, some people get delivered really fast. Can I tell you something? There's sometimes when I see with brothers, I'm like, come on, man, get it, you know? Let's get it. Let's go and live for Jesus Christ. But you see, everyone has a different level of faith. Amen? And there was something that was so pure in my heart, and I'm not trying to elevate myself. I give the glory to God. There was a desperateness in my life to change. There was something in me that says, I must die. The old me cannot live because I know what I can do. I will go and put these grave clothes back on and live who I used to be. God, deal with my heart. Help me to be humble. Help me to say sorry to my wife. Help me not to be who I was anymore because I cannot live like this. Beloved, there are some people that find deliverance in a moment of time but can I tell you what the key is it is humility amen because the Bible says uh, that those who humble themselves will be exalted and those who are proud he said I will put you down I said I can't do this anymore I struggled with insecurity low self-esteem the jealousy fits of rage hatred any anyone who had an authority figure I wasn't the meanest guy but I had no respect for you But these remain intentionally so that God can strip them away. Jesus has called people to help unbind the straps of linen to reveal what's inside. Amen? Right? Sometimes we want Jesus. Well, Jesus is, you know what I hear a lot of people? Right? They'll be smoking a joint, smoking cigarettes. You know, they're out at a bar doing their thing. Oh, Jesus will take it away one day. Have you ever heard that before? One day, one day you know, Jesus will. I, I pray about it, Pastor. One day it'll, it'll go out of me and, and it's just going to go away. Can I tell you, there are some things that God is using the body of Christ to show you the mirror and say, Brother, I still see some grave clothes. Sister, one day. Now, God is challenging you here today. He says, allow the body of Christ allow people who have become victorious in an area you see i've been i've been delivered of alcoholism therefore i can share with a brother or a sister saying beloved this is not the answer this is not the key again to righteousness or fill in the blank marijuana it don't matter unright it could be anything anger envy but he's called the body of christ to help him unbind The stripes of linen. Can I prove that to you? Ready? Jesus said to who? To them. Take off the grave clothes and let him go. He said, I did the salvation. I saved him. I did the impossible. But he says, now he's telling the disciples, the church, uh, he is telling them. He says, you, my disciples, them. He says, take off the grave clothes and let him go. In other words, pull the binds off. And remove them from him, because he is no longer dead, but alive. You say amen? We've got to humble ourselves. Right? Sometimes God uses individuals to show you, hey, I need you to take a look in the mirror, brother or sister. I don't do this to offend you or to hurt you, but I care about your life. Uh, There there are grave clothes that are still wrapped around you, and if they are not letting go, it's going to take you in a different direction. And this is what love is sometimes, telling people, hey, you know what, I care for your life. I have been called by Jesus to take off the grave clothes and to let you go. And individuals will say, unless God does it, I ain't changing for no one. I prayed the sitter's prayer, right? We've heard that. I prayed that sitter's prayer there. I have did the deed. I tipped my hat to the Lord. I am good. I am ready. I'm on my way to the celestial kingdom of God. But we forget about this, the linen. One of the best advice that I got from pastor, I told you I was like, <laughs> I mean, my biggest problem was alcohol. But, you know, it was cocaine, cigarettes, and all that. All that was kind of like, it only happened when I was drunk. But well, Pastor Stephen said this. He says, never go to diet, never go to a bar for a diet coke, Vince, right? <laughs> you don't go, <laughs> right? Don't go there because you're putting yourself in a position to what? 
One time I went with the singer of the band. He was homeless, and, you know, I'm trying to reach out to him and save him. I'm like, Adam, man, you can be free from this, brother. You know, you know no more. I'm, I, I am that. I'm, you know, I'm telling him I'm the guy in the grave. I'm the dead guy, but I'm saved here today. I am testifying you, and my wife will let me go. I mean, he would, he would sit in the car. I mean, he would leave a stench that would leave. I mean, I'm talking like Lazarus in the grave, that stench would stay on the seat. I mean, it would just reek, but it didn't matter. Here's my friend who was in the grave for more than four days and had a foul odor on him. But I remember he took me to the, to the gas station. He says, hey, Vince, maybe you could buy me a beer. I said, I ain't supporting your bad habits. I'll buy you some Jack in the Box. We'll go to Taco Bell. I can buy you some food, but I'm not, I'm not supporting your bad habits. I'm free, and I didn't come here to give you demons. I didn't come here to make you stumble and make you fall. I didn't come here to, you know, buy you, you get four high gravities on the spot immediately. He said, I didn't come here to, to cause you to stumble and now I'm accountable for you. He would get upset. But can I tell you the honest truth when I was in there? I'm like, whoa. <laughs> whoa. I'm looking at that high gravity. I can taste it. I'm being and she's giving me the weird face. I'm being honest. You know, I would be a liar to say, I don't care. Ah, give me, you know what I mean? And I would look at them and just like, man, the taste of them. But see, that's like me picking up my old garments and saying, ooh, I remember this tea, the rock band, you know, and I mean, it's covered in death. It smells like a dead body and you just want to slip it back on. See, a lot of Christians... You know, when they go back, well, that's essentially what they're doing. They're going back to their old robes and linen and just binding themselves again and saying, hey, this looks kind of hip now. It's according to the trend. Without even knowing, beloved, that we have garments of righteousness to be wearing. Can you say amen? amen. Righteousness and holiness, purity, the garments that we have today, if you can see them, beloved, they'd be brighter than the sun. They're brighter than, than any white thing that you have ever seen in this life. They are glowing. And Jesus Christ, he says, do not stain those robes. Do not go back to your old grave clothes, for I have delivered you from darkness unto the light of Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 6.10 this one scared me. It said, no thieves, nor greedy, nor drunkards, uh, nor slanderers, no swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. That was enough for me that day to say, I am done. Uh, and asked my wife again, every month I shared with you another victory, another milestone. I'm sober. I'll go at the third month uh, and I'm going to have my victory beer. I'm going to have the things uh, that make me happy. But beloved, uh, as I started to see the glory of Jesus Christ, there was a change in my heart that said, for what? Why go back and pick up those filthy garments that Jesus delivered me from, that brothers and sisters from the church helped to unbind me, an old filthy sinner. They begin to show me my life and say, hey, no more of this anymore. Why would I go back to the things that even my brothers and sisters helped? My pastor pulled out some. You know, Ernie Lopez helped pull another. Pastor Puglisi, you know, Luke and all my friends, they helped because they saw all the binds that were on me saying, you, you're resurrected from the dead, but brother, you still got some grave clothes on. We got to take them off, and they sure did, and I was amazed. But I'm amazed how many Christians go back to their tomb to give up what God is doing right now just for a little, a little uh, attire that's trendy, right? A little zombie lookalike. Romans 6, 1 through 4 says, What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? He said, By no means. He says, No, <laughs> we don't continue in sin. We are those who have what? Died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a what? A new life. He's talking about the garments you're wearing. We will never know how great God's love and deliverance is until we see how great our sin is. And I always tell people, you know, you got to hate your sin. Pastor, how do I get rid of the cigarettes? How do I get rid of pornography? How do I? you got to hate your sin. And understand what it looks like to God. And we will never know how great God's love is, His deliverance, until we see how great our sin is. 
Because there is no fear in God when people do this. Beloved, the Lord has been sending people, amen, to remove grave clothes. I was convicted again, trying to go back into an old habit. I told you it worked. Had a bad attitude and something, and there comes Barry the prophet again. He says, Vince, he says, God has called you to be new. <sighs> Pastor of the church. You know, I'm out of here. I'm, <laughs> you know, I'm out of here. But see, he, said he cared enough for me. He said, I said, don't wrap that around your wrist, man. You know, anger and, and you know, being frustrated. You want to you go back to the old way? And he said, he came up to me and he yanked it off. And he said, you're, you're a new creation. Don't be like that no more. Ah. You know, pastor out. <laughs> you know, it happens, beloved, because we get tempted of those clothes. But we need to put on the garments of righteousness, amen, as we're closing tonight, amen, of holiness in Christ. Can you say amen? Jump on those garments, keep them on. If you saw how pure they were, you'd never take them off. Isaiah 52, mark this one. If you, if you need to save a scripture, this is the one here. Isaiah 52, 1 through 2. It says, awake, awake, put on your strength. O Zion, put on your beautiful garments. O Jerusalem, the holy city, for there shall no more come into you the uncircumcised and the unclean, the old life. Shake yourself from the dust and arise. Be seated, O Jerusalem. Loose the bonds from your neck, O captive daughter of Zion. He's saying that. He says, you are a new creation put on the new garments uh, do not be defiled by the world anymore he says yeah you yourself loosen the bonds from your neck we can do that today we can loosen those bonds from our neck it says oh captive daughter of zion church we need to be empowered we need to be filled with the holy spirit courageous uh, we need to fight for truth uh, we need to uh, uh, find uh, the spirit of god to be renewed by the mind uh, day by day cleansing ourselves uh, removing the bands of stripes of linen uh, the bury the, gla- the grave clothes and put on the white garments of jesus christ this is the only way to put it tonight in simplicity before we leave okay what's in the grave stays in the grave And so often people get tempted, right? Even after a church service, they already got the shovel in the car or in the back of their shoulder and said, I'll be right back, right? And they put themselves another band. God cares about what you're wearing, right? He really cares. Don't be as those that were, you know, a David and Bradley that were switched and found a different funeral home because of the garments that they were wearing. One ended up being obviously cremated. One did not make it to their parents, amen. This is the last one I have, and look what it says here. Okay, talking about garments, and we're done. Then he said this to his servants, speaking of the last days, the wedding banquet is ready. But those I invited did not deserve to come, speaking of the religious people. So go to the street corners and invite and invite to the banquet anyone you find. So the servants went out into the streets and gathered all the people that they could find. Look, everyone's invited. That's why I say the church is not a gated community. I mean, we need to invite everybody. It says the bad as well as the good. And the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man, I don't know, he noticed a man there who was not wearing wedding clothes. Now, pause right there. Jewish custom, even like you go to quinceanera, where there's always a particular attire that they like to wear colors, and usually we honor those things. We'll find a way. It's not that serious, but in Jewish custom, if you were invited to the wedding, you were in that pamphlet or invitation you got uh, was what you were supposed to wear. It was not just show up and dress how you wanted. It was custom to come according to what was said on that notice. Verse 11, but when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed the man there who was not wearing wedding clothes. Oh, it has to do with clothes. And he asked, how did you get in here without wedding clothes? You should have known, friend. The man was what? Speechless. Then the king told the attendants, tie him hand and foot and throw him outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are invited, but few are chosen. This is talk, a picture of the day of heaven that you have to be wearing the right garments. 
And those are the ones that Jesus Christ has provided for us. Remember uh, the scriptures say in Romans chapter 6, it says, put on the Lord Jesus. Remember I taught you that? In the Old Testament, they used their own provision, fig leaves. They put on fig leaves to cover themselves, to hide themselves. The Bible says that for the last days, amen, put on the Lord Jesus. Clothe yourself in righteousness. For what would it profit a man or a woman here tonight to gain, to, to gain the whole world, yet to lose their soul, beloved? It is not worth it to live. I'm here to testify of that, amen, that you can be made new in Jesus Christ. And if you're struggling with that, amen, today is a day that your brothers and sisters are willing to unloose the bands and say, it's time to come clean. Let us bow our heads in Jesus' name before we leave today. Should we consider this message? As God put it in my heart, I'm just thinking about my life, I told my wife, I said, I feel like another preacher moaning, sharing my testimony. And I was reading my Bible and I came across this. I said, there it is. He said, preach about your old grave clothes, the edited version. I said, yes, Lord. But before we leave today, amen, beloved, I'm here to tell you, consider what the Bible says. Who cares what I say? But of the righteousness that God has called us to live. Remember, we are not saved by works. We are saved by grace through faith. But when God t touches you supernaturally, things begin to strip away. And so that while we live on this earth, beloved, we are now aware, our conscience is open, amen, the spirit is active in our life to now do the things that we normally wouldn't do. Back then it would be frustration and cheating and lying to people. Now it's like, wait a second, I got a conscience, I got the Holy Ghost. Maybe I shouldn't do this. Yeah, you shouldn't. For those who have been enlightened by the Holy Spirit. Before we leave today, amen, you are still in your grave clothes, amen. And there's an order on your body. Hopefully not physically. <laughs> amen. But, amen, there's an order that is coming out. And it's leaving a stench, amen, because it belonged in the grave. And Jesus is here tonight before we leave saying, I want the grave clothes off. And he's going to say these words to you. Come forth. Loosen the bands. For he was once dead and now he is alive. Amen. That is you in Jesus' name. God is calling you. He's calling you to loosen the bands right now. Amen. You know that is you within your heart. Amen. You can come to this altar as a brother. I am, I, I'm, I'm looking out to see if I see any kind of linen on you that is not of Christ. Amen. Come clean to the altar of God. Amen. That is you. You're not right with Jesus Christ. Amen. You have been tempted to put on the grave clothes. Amen. You need to repent here today. In Jesus' mighty name, I'm speaking to brothers and sisters. Of Christ, I love you. And I know that God loves you, amen. He shines upon us here today. And he has called the church, amen. This is why it is important to gather for accountability purposes. To be accountable to one another. To help one another. And to help each other to be stronger in Christ, amen. Don't let this moment slip by, amen. The grave clothes are clear as day and Jesus wants to help you, amen. Raise your hand all over this place. Is that a hand? Okay, God sees that hand. Anyone else? In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. little temptation in your life. Beloved, we have Christ. Amen. There's forgiveness. There's no need to hide. Amen. That's the wonderful thing about salvation is we can come clean with no shame and say, God, I need help in this area. I'm falling again. Thank you, Jesus. Anyone else? Join this on his heart. Ladies. Amen. Young people here today. Amen. God loves you. Amen. He's about restoration. Amen. He doesn't want to just keep jamming you. We don't learn when we're jammed so often. And God is dealing with me in a different way, amen. But we, I want to encourage you to fight for righteousness, amen. I want to encourage you to be stronger than what you were this morning. And I need that too, in Jesus' name. Anyone else? Just want to make sure, amen. I know God's tugging on your heart. One more time, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Brother Benny, amen. Come forward, amen. We're going to open the altars. Please come to the front. Before we leave, amen, deal with some things. If you know that there's something personal in your life that you need to deal with, Right now, we'll strip them off or you can raise your hand in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So they, they can. Yeah, they come back, right? So that they revisit you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Brother Benny. And the, these things are common to men. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians. Why am I whispering? 1 Corinthians 10, 13, it says, What men struggle with is common to all mankind. And you know what the devil would want you to think? You're the only one that's going through it. 
You're the only one. Brother, let me tell you, sometimes I can be hot-headed. Hot blood. Just rise up, amen. And those things can happen. So whatever you're struggling with, amen, I thank you. And this is what we do as brothers. Amen, I love you, buddy. And this is what we're here, amen, to just unloosen the band. Brother, I see one right here. Let's take it off. Amen. And I mean it in the name of Jesus, amen. Jesus. This is what, uh, amen. So let's pray. And uh, I want to ask God to help you, amen, with any temptation, any struggle, and to continue to work. You've been angry? Okay, all right. We're going to ask God for that as well, amen, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let's lift our hands, brother, and just say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. I give my body. My soul and my mind to you. You are my everything, my creator and my Lord. I believe in your power and the manifestation of your son, Jesus. Help me, God, to remove every bond and any linen and all in Jesus' name to be given to you. I don't want my grave clothes. I want the robes of righteousness and of peace. Help me with my anger, every temptation and every struggle. I want to see the victory in my household and also given to my children and to my grandchildren, extended to every generation. And what I deposit today will benefit those in the future that come after me. In Jesus' mighty name, let me pray. Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus Christ, God, God, that you would deal with anything that is within Benny. God, loosen the binds in Jesus' name. All the grave clothes to be removed, Father God. Give him a new heart uh, and a new spirit, God. Sensitivity to hear your voice, God. Fill him, Lord, for he is essential of the body of Christ. Uh, and let him know today, God, that he is needed in this church. Uh, his presence is needed, God. Uh, his authority that has been given by Christ is needed uh, for the essential of the growth of this body. God, let him be a testimony, a pillar, so that people would see and know that the power of the living God is being demonstrated through this man. I break every curse of Satan. I break every lie that has been given to him. And Father, you will use this man for the purposes that you have. Father, use his characteristics, God. Heal anything that is not right. Deal with the anger of his heart, O oh God. Let him know that Jesus Christ is Lord, that he has everything within his hand, and his power will deal with all those things that come against him in Jesus' mighty name. God, give him this authority right now, for he is a man of the living God. Amen. Today we thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let us just give praise to God. We thank you. God, deal with our heart. In Jesus' name. Amen. Anyone need prayer before we leave? I'm, I'm about to topple over. <laughs> I was like, amen. God help me. It's an early one tomorrow. Amen. Anyone need prayer before we leave? God bless you then. Amen. Can I remind you, the grave clothes stay in the grave. Amen. amen. Just like Jesus said. And then for accountability, if I, if I see some linen on you, don't get offended if I tell you. Amen. It's just out of love. It's just, hey, I see some, I don't know if that's toilet paper or dead clothes linen, but it needs to come off. In Jesus' name, beloved, and that's how we stay sharp in the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. Let us hold accountable. We're not holding grudges. This is not of, of self-righteousness or who's better. Beloved, let's get strong together in the body of Christ. Amen. Remember, there's grace for the sinner. Come clean to God, and he will help you in these last days. Amen. We're getting close. Amen. So we're going to bow our heads. Uh, we're closing our eyes. Uh, Benny, if you would, dismiss us again. Pray. And we are off. Amen. Thank you. Yes. Jesus. Yes. Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, before you leave, generational curses. Sunday morning. Okay. You want to see what happens? Amen. Something that God revealed to me. You want to know why some things are transferred? I'm, I told my wife. She said, that's a good one. I'm calling this transform or transfer. You either transform it or it will be passed to the next generation and it'll come twofold, and then we're gonna wonder, what's happening? It's, you either transform it now, or get it transferred, and the Bible calls for that, amen. Oh, we already prayed. See what I mean? I'm a little off, amen. So if, uh, um, if you want your kids to hear that as well, she had a good idea. What is it? That, yeah. If you want the kids to sit into this one, I'm, I'm try, gonna try, not, I'm not very articulate, but I'm gonna try to minimize it, but you're gonna see what generational curses do and things that we can actually activate 
in our households right now that are actually affecting our children, but how we can uh, bring that back into the power of God. Amen. So transform or transfer Sunday morning. So invite someone you know who maybe have generational curses. I'm speaking to everyone here and we'll get them together. Amen. So God bless you. Don't bother me. Don't text me. <laughs> We're all good. God bless you. Those on the live stream. Amen. Hope you're blessed with that. Look at the scriptures again. Uh,